How's it going? My name is Trevon. I work with Century 21, Mike Bowman. I'm a real estate agent in the DFW Metroplex. Today, I'm going to do a video on the four North Texas cities that top the list of best real estate markets in America. Let's get into it. I know I uh, I meet a quite quite a bit of few quite a bit of people who you know when they're moving here they're trying to figure out what's going on with the market and it's one of those ones where it's you know we're right in the middle we're right in the middle if you want to say sellers or buyers it's going to depend on the area you're looking because some areas are hot hot you know what I mean and and we'll kind of go over this or go over that as we read through this article a website's culture map. <clears throat> Excuse me, Culture Map Fort Worth. Move this down a bit. All right, for those looking to rent an apartment or buy their first home, Dallas Fort Worth is the place to be. Report done by Wallet Hub, DFW Towns, McKinney, and Frisco were crowned number one and number two. Best real estate markets in America and two more in the area, Denton and Allen. And Allen's pretty close to Frisco and McKinney, so. Same thing, and then Denton's kind of on the other side. Um, but those were also ranked among the top 10. The study took an in-depth look at real estate markets in 300 U.S. cities based on 17 metrics, including median home price appreciation, the ratio of rent price to sell price, vac vacancy rates, housing and maintenance affordability, population and job growth, and more. McKinney scored the top spot nationally because it's rapid growth and solid job market with the 13th highest growth with the 13th highest job growth rate in the nation to match and that, that makes i mean i'm off script here that makes perfect sense when you go through mckinney i'm not saying it's chaotic they just have a lot going on there's so many things to do they've got really nice homes you can there's you're not going to run a run out of activities and if you want to get to the city, you still can. Now, yes, you know, you might hit a little bit of traffic, but honestly, anywhere in the DFW Metroplex, given that time of day, it is what it is. You're gonna hit traffic, you know what I mean? That's just the way things are going. They're trying to add on the highways. Looks like they're only adding on the tolls, but that's a whole nother conversation. So yeah, McKinney has the second highest share of houses that were built between 2010 and, 20, and 2021 at 35%, which means that new buyers have a lot of options for houses that may not need major maintenance for a while. Yeah, that makes sense. Like I'm, when you go through there, it doesn't seem like they have homes from as many homes from like the 1980s and 1960s and stuff like that. Of course, this area was not that popular at that time, but still. Zillow's home value index says the average McKinney home is worth 520,000 as as of July 2024 and the homes on the market for about 18 days before uh, going pending. So yeah, that's fair enough. You know, Zillow's information is sometimes wishy-washy, but yeah, the the average sales price around Collin County is like 500,000 499. I need to re look at the numbers. I know it's gone down considerably, but it's still high. McKinney is also expected to complete construction on uh, 1,600 new apartments by the end of 2024. And I actually did a video a couple weeks back, uh, or it might have been my last video, to be honest with you. Um, and I just explained, yeah, how many apartment we're going to compete basically with New York. I think we're only building three less apartment units by the end of 2020, 20, uh, by the end of 2024. So, I mean, if you... Once you see big money moving like that, it's going to come. You know what I mean? Does it, Will it work out? That's not the question they're asking. They're putting their money uh, where their mouth is, and they're actually they're building here. So I, I would assume and expect that they know a little bit more than us as far as the macro data with all that big money and what you can do. But yeah, let's keep going. So Wallet Hub does point out that North Dallas suburbs isn't the cheapest city to move two on the list, but it's still far more affordable than many other American cities by comparison. And that's fair, like, which is, a, it's kind of a terrible comparison when you hear it like that. And if you're thinking that things are going to become more affordable, I don't think so. You know what I mean? Like the way the dollar's going, the way inflation's going, it just seems like things that uh, really have value, true value, 
I know that there's some cons about owning a home, but it's just one of those ones. And we saw it in 2019 and 2020. No one would have expected home values to go up that drastically. I'm telling you, people were spending, bro, people were spending 40%, 50% over the asking price, over the appraisal value. Like, just like, oh, okay, whatever. It's the home is not worth the home's listed at 250,000. This is an example. Home's listed at 250,000. People were going in it at 400,000. We'll close in seven days. Like, just. And yeah, they're getting kicked around over there, you know, in, in some of those areas where uh, they spent way more than it was worth. Uh, but yeah, let's let's keep going. So the median home price in McKinney is around three hundred and the median home price in McKinney is around three hundred fifty three percent of the median income, which is the seventieth seventy sixth cheapest out of this three hundred cities in our study. Oh, that's how they did it. Okay. In addition, the ranks. In the 50 least expensive cities for maintenance and telephone cost and 40 least expensive for energy cost. Mm. Interesting. And Wallhub's ranking the best real estate markets by city. McKinney ranked number one in the mid-sized cities categories. Wow, that's incredible and, and exciting. So if you are somebody that lives in McKinney or you want to move to McKinney, this is great information right here. You're going to know that you probably will have competition especially if that home is beautiful. I can't be the only one that's seen this, uh, this article, right? And they're basing this off data. So, you know what I mean? These are the things you think about when you're buying. And, and it'll kind of make sense too, if you're buying in that whole entire Collin area, Collin, Collin County area. Because I mean, Frisco, look, we'll go into that. Earn the coveted number two ranked by having 42% of all housing in the city built between 2010 and 2021. The highest share nationally. Just like McKinney, that means many homeowners won't have to put in a lot of work or stress to maintain their home for several years. This can be true. The average home price in Frisco is worth 687000 as of July 2024. And homes stay on the market around 17 days before being marked as pending. Yep. That seems about right. I'm telling you, like, it is a, is, it's kind of a jump. Like, when you go to, you go to Plano, and you hit Frisco. And yeah, you see values skyrocket. I mean, you're starting to see more million dollar homes in Frisco. Well, do I think that they're worth that much? That's just a whole nother, whole nother discussion. There's a lot of value out there. So we shall see in the future, right? But Frisco also scored highly in reports of affordability scale, boosted by its number 15th rank best job growth rate in the US, yeah, that makes sense. The city also has the 10th best job market nationally with the second largest remote force. Uh, yeah, re remote workforce. Makes sense. And then, uh, you know, Disney is going to be coming to Frisco or north of Frisco. So, man, they're not stopping, man. They're not stopping. And this is kind of the same thing. If you're trying to move to Frisco, know that you're going to have some competition and the prices are going to be a little bit steep. And know that, in, I mean, in some cases, though, yeah, your seller's still going to have a lot of equity. Especially if they bought in 2010 or 2017. They're probably going to have a decent amount of equity. So just because the home's priced at what it is doesn't mean they'll take that. But it depends. Every home is different. Every situation is different. If you are someone moving to the area, you want help, you have questions, you want stats, Shoot me a call, give me a text. I will leave my information in the description. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> Elsewhere across North Texas, Dallas-Fort Worth suburbs dominated the top 10 best U.S. real estate markets with Denton and Allen earning number eight and number nine, respectively. In the national rankings by city size, the, the two cities claim number one and number two in the small city category. According to Zillow, there's a wide disparity between average home prices across the two cities. The average price of a home in Denton, 368 versus 528 in Allen. Exactly, Allen's close to Collin County, close to Frisco, close to all these areas, North Dallas. So yeah, it's, it's just a different uh, vibe out there as far as the price. Fort Worth's housing market ranked number 28 nationwide, while Dallas fell behind as number 59. That's incredible. And I'll tell you, if you are someone that's investing Fort Worth, you're sleeping. 
It's happening. They're coming. Investors, flippers. And there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of houses that uh, you need help, right? And the people that are living there necessarily are not trying to pay the property taxes from what I've been seeing. So decent opportunity there. If you have some questions, uh, feel free to reach out, man. All right, seven additional North Texas cities earn spots among the top 100 housing markets. Richardson, Carrollton, Irving, Plano, Garland, Grand Prairie, and Arlington. I mean, that shows you then the growth is, that's happening around here. All these cities are pretty much, okay, Richardson's on the other side. Uh, Carrollton's on the other side. But, Ur I mean, they, they're all connecting from Arlington, from Fort Worth, Grand Prairie, Garland, Plano, a little more north. But that's going to connect. I did a video on Bedford and Flower Mound as well recently. Wow. So that's exciting news. So, yeah, Wallet Hub analyst Cassandra. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Hop, hape, hippie, provided a few suggestions for North Texas potential home buyers who are on the lookout for their uh, forever home. As there are so, as there are so many ele elements that must be considered in addition to a city's current home prices. Uh, this is her quote: factors like the cost of living, the potential for the value of a home to increase, the availability of recently built homes, and the quality of the city's job market are important to consider in conjunction with asking prices and interest rates. She, uh, Hop said, "The best cities may not always be the cheapest, but they offer excellent housing options, long-term stability." The six remaining top housing markets are located in North Carolina, Tennessee, North Carolina. Arizona, North Carolina, a lot of activity happening in North Carolina and Florida. So that is exciting. That is exciting. That makes sense too. I'm, I'll, I'll maybe go into this in another video, but you were seeing a lot of vacant um, ha uh, commercial still, a lot of vacant commercial. What I'm seeing as far as commercial, they're building um, apartments, you know, they're building condominiums and stuff like that. But this is some news, man. If you are someone that's moving to the area and you have an idea, you're, you're trying to grasp an idea of what's really going on, this is what's going on, right? We've had double the inventory that we've had last year. So there's more options. So in some cases, if you're selling the home, you're not, you're like, wow, my home is in one of these markets. But now there's also double the competition. So it does that's why i kind of say it meets in the middle right now in some areas yeah the, there's not homes for sale as often and there is competition and they do go quickly and then in some cases there are tons of homes and there's tons of options to choose from so homes are sitting longer than expected but i still wouldn't say it's doom and gloom i would say we're really ripe perfectly not perfectly we're really in a good position because as interest rates trickled uh, downward, as they did the last two weeks, I think they're going to continue to go down from what Powell was stating and what the genus, you know, what the general idea is. So I think our market's in a really good position. Now we're, we're tinkering in that, uh, you know, school starts, market slows down to a degree, right? If you have a family of three or four, are you going to buy a house and move and your kids move another school? If that school is not in the same area, maybe not. Maybe you'll wait for the year. I feel like that's just, that's that's normal, right? I feel like I would do that. So that's kind of the vibe of the market. Eventually, it's going to pick up, you know, once people start moving in November, December, January. Um, and that's kind of the flow. But it's going to be an exciting year. If you have any questions regarding real estate at all, feel free to give me a call, shoot me a text. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching this. And if you like this type of content, uh, let me know, drop a like, leave a comment uh, if you have any questions at all. Uh, but yeah, again, my name is Trevon. I work with Century 21 Mike Bowman, and I will catch you guys in the next video. All right, later.